DNS automation is a challenge faced by every DevOps engineer, especially in the Kubernetes environment. You want to allow the developers to be able to deploy the application and expose to the internet and test it. At the same time, you don't want to allow them to have a privileged access to modify the DNS entries. This is where external DNS comes in. Once installed on a Kubernetes cluster, it can be configured to monitor ingress resources or a HTTP root resource for the gateway API or even a service. When a new resource is created, an external DNS will detect and it will create a DNS entry for you. For this demo, I have a DNS domain called vetum.online. I have configured it on root 53. As you can see, it's just configured and no other entries. I also have a single node EKS cluster configured with pod identity agent. All the configuration files discussed here are available on my blog or on in my GitHub repo. I will add the links to it in the comment section. Uh, this is my EKS cluster. As you can see, I have a Envoy gateway configured with load balancer controller. And I also have the pod identity agent installed. There is a gateway configured already and just provisioned a load balancer controller. I'll be using the total load balancer here. There are two parts to configuring the external DNS. Number one is authentication so that the external DNS can modify the DNS entries for you. In this case, I'll be using pod identity and I am policy because I'm using Amazon EKS and my domain is configured on the root 53. And the second part will be installing the Helm chart with the necessary values. Step one is creating an IAM policy. Here's a sample policy that allows access to all of the hosted zones. And step two is creating a IAM role and I'm calling it external DNS controller. This must have a pod identity service policy. So you can see the trust policy is there for the pod identity.eks.com and attach the external DNS IAM policy. I have already created a IAM role. So it's called external DNS controller. And if you look at the permissions, you can see the external DNS policy is attached. So I have just access to all of the hosted zones. And in the trust relationships, you can see pod identities is added. Now that the role is ready, the next step is to create the pod identity association. So we go back to the Kubernetes cluster and go to the access tab and create a pod identity association. Click on create. Select a role. This will only list the roles that have pod identity agent enabled, trust policy enabled. So I select the DNS controller, namespace. I'm installing it on external DNS namespace. For service account, I'm using external DNS controller. So I'll create. Step five is installing the external DNS server with a custom values file. This is an example of the values file. In the service account name, I specified the same as what I specified when I'm creating the pod identity association, which is external DNS controller. The sources, which all sources the external DNS will be monitoring. In my case, I'll be monitoring ingress resource as well as creation of any gateway API HTTP root resource. So in the domain filters, you will define which all domains you will be monitoring for. In my case, it's only one domain. And if you have multiple domains, you can always add it here. Text owner ID is a unique string for each external DNS installation. Whenever a DNS entry is created by external DNS, it will also create a TXT record with the text owner ID field. This will enable you to identify the DNS entries created by this specific DNS external DNS server. I already have a values file here and, uh, and I will go ahead and install the application. So you can see I'm in the folder, I'm got a values file. I'll go ahead and use Helm install to install the external DNS service. You can see there is external DNS coming up and uh, let's look at the logs for any errors. Okay. So you can see there is no errors in this particular server. Everything is looking good. Now we are ready to test our external DNS by deploying a sample application. Here's a link to a sample application I have created. So let's go back to the DNS entry, root 53. Here you can see there are no root 53 entries. And if you go to the application, you can see there are no HTTP routes. And we are tailing the logs of external DNS. And you can see all the resources are up to date. There's no other new entries being created. And here's the list of all the ports. You will see the applications coming up. 
here is the external application. This is the application which I'm installing, and this is simple echo server available publicly. And uh, the main difference is here I'm configuring two host names. So I'll be creating two HTTP routes. One is www.betam.online, and there's one another one called new.betam.online. So let's go ahead and deploy this application. So I'm already in the folder, and I'm going to apply the configuration gateway api so watch for the http routes and the application coming up and also you will see the logs being updated when just creating the dns entry you can see the application coming up you have a http route with two domain names so now we tail the logs and wait for the dns to be updated external dns to detect the changes and update the dns external dns checks periodically for the updates, and it will also make sure if the entries are missing in the DNS, it will make sure entries are created. So as you can see, it's detected the changes and is creating a record for it. So let's go back to our DNS and refresh. So here we go. You can see there are two multiple entries created. There is new.vetum.online, that is a type A record, and that is pointing to the load balancer. And if you look at the text record, you will see that it's created a text entry with the unique value we provided. So let's test the application. It may take one or two minutes for the DNS to update, and uh, then we'll test the application. So let's go copy the URL, go to a new tab, and voila, it's working. So let's check the next one, next URL, that is tab, tab, tab. Okay, so the external DNS is working, DNS update is working and you're able to see the application. So let's go ahead and make a change to the application. So let's say I'll add two more entries. So one is called extra, and that is within my domain. And I'll, I'll create another one in the tor.uk domain. So remember, we have configured the external DNS to modify the DNS only, manage the DNS only for the betum.online, not for core.uk. So this is especially useful when you're using a CDN. So sometimes you want to create the CDN URL to be managed externally and not implemented here. Okay, configuration changed. And uh, when you look at the HTTP routes, you can see there's extra one and also the new.vetum.co.uk. So let's wait for the DNS update to happen, and then you will see it will pick up the extra entry, but not the vetum.co.uk. So here you can see in this configuration, it's picked up the new domain extra, that is vetum.online, and it ignored the vetum.co.uk. And if you go and look at the DNS entries, you should see that new entry to be created, entry being created, so you can see. Thank you very much and I hope you find this video useful.